Okay, so uh, so this was this was fun. I was playing with Calendly and Google Calendar and trying to figure out what I could do with Google, Google Calendar um, using the uh, the connectors. And going through a bit of a process, I learned a couple of things. Um, the The first one was that um, I had written a number of of the <laughs> the flows and. Um, Started out with doing them where I was I was uh, originating from FileMaker, and uh, was using uh, a script trigger basically to start the flow, and um, and then later of course found out that the, the a better way to do it was to use the webhook uh, versus the script trigger because then I could create several of them. But um, but it was it was a good opportunity to learn a little bit of, about the script trigger and passing the variables to it. Where I would uh, pass a variable to that script trigger, and um, and then could check to see whether or not it was uh, it was empty, and if it was, I would stop the flow. If it wasn't, I would continue on. And then for each of my scripts that I was firing off to do different things, I was just putting um, a different variable in um, that I was passing to that script trigger because you could only pass them to um, to that one that one script trigger, which uh, yeah only send them to that one one script trigger so after that then um got on our slack channel and was like hey what's going how do you, is there a better way and kate chimed in and she 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 let me know about the web books i'm like oh yeah duh should have done that <laughs> so then i was playing with converting them over to to the web hooks and much easier to use the web hooks um under one project um and that's because the um the uh if you if you're doing them under the script trigger, there's only one script trigger basically per project. Whereas with the webhooks, you can generate the webhooks um, as many as you want. Just uh, They just need to be unique um, from what I could tell. Um, I don't know if there's uh, if there's any cost difference for using multiple webhooks or not, um, but, um, but it was a whole lot smoother because then I could just package the, um, the JSON object that I was passing to it um, based on what I needed. So uh, with that, here I'll go over through, through setting up one of the flows. So I'll do a, a new flow for um, Google Calendar and just show you what I went through. So we'll do uh, Google Calendar test. And we'll create a new one there. And then, uh, like I said, the webhook was the way to go. So I definitely would recommend that versus the other. So you can set the webhook um, incoming HTTP request. And um, we're gonna, I have a number of them in here and I could use an existing one. I'll just go ahead and create a new one. And it has to be unique. So I'm just naming it, create calendar, uh, calendar event. And we'll call this two, cause I did one earlier. And it saves it out and it gives us this little handy little URL to paste into our script. Um, and then it's waiting for us to test it to make sure that it's working, right? So I go into my FileMaker client and I, uh, need to write a script to, of course, be able to do that. Um, and I've got one here that I was testing. I'll just duplicate it and we'll set the, um, so in, in this script, pretty straightforward. I'm passing some base, base uh, values from my, from the layout that I'm on. Then we're going to be calling this script trigger from not script trigger, but um, webhook from that's going to tell Claris what to do. And that way I can reference the record that I'm on and have it update that record. So I'm passing the record ID, of course, from the record that I'm on in the set when I fire off this event. And then um, I am creating an event and, and I'm passing in some information about that event. So I'm passing in a variable called create event. And then I build up the uh, JSON data uh, as it was explained in the, um, in, in, um, in the script triggers on how to pass in variables to Claris Connect. I'm using that to, um, to build the same JSON value so I can pass in, um, base in basically my action and script, which is required. And then the record ID that I wanna pass, the primary key for the, um, for the record that I'm on, and then create event, which is the variable that I'm passing. I'm gonna pull into the, pull into to Google Calendar when I create the uh, calendar event. 
So I set that JSON object up and then um, used that insert from URL. And uh, I took this from a script that, that John had written and it, it's pretty nice. It's got a target as a result. So it's gonna respond with the result so we can see what's happening to the variable result. And then if, if the result's okay, we'll just ignore it. Otherwise we're gonna show that dialogue. And um, right now that's gonna show us a dialogue since we're, we're doing the, um, since we're gonna be doing a webhook, it's always gonna respond with the, with the webhook value, which is good because then I can see what, what the response should be. Um, so our target specify URL, that's where I paste in that special uh, webhook value. So we paste that in, uh, put it in quotes. Um, basically, you know, this is the identifier, I think, for where it's at. And then it's webhook version one. And then this is the name of the webhook. So it's using that to, to capture. I'm not sure if the catch is necessary or not, but that's in the URL that they say. So, um, so once I've set that, I can go ahead and insert from URL and I'll get my response back. So if we go ahead and call this now to test, because we're waiting on our page here to test before we can save the trigger, um, we'll go ahead and uh, run that through, um, set my variables, insert from URL, result is okay, or does not equal okay because I am getting a response because I'm doing a webhook, which is expected. Um, however, the, uh, the alternate way that I was doing it, which was the, um, maybe not the best way, but the, the script trigger uh, would respond with okay. And so you could just bypass it. So this is the, uh, the response. And of course, then you can use this response to determine whether or not everything's good. Um, and after that, uh, it should have, it looks like it fired off good. So, um, so now yeah, yep, you can see my webhook has been accepted and now I can save it as a trigger. Um, so from that, I've got my incoming. And the next thing I want to do is create an action to create my Google Calendar. So there was a, there's, there's a small list in here. And there, there's, some, there's some pretty cool ones. Um, I was a little unsure about a couple of them. So the one I was going to do was create event quick start, right? That one's the easiest. The advanced one was a little bit more. And you have to have date and timestamps formatted. Get calendar information and get calendar list. I'll show you the responses from those. I am not really sure how useful those are. Um, because they are telling you about your, you know, when you're in your Google calendar, they're telling you about the calendars, which I'm not sure how, how often I would use those, but it gives you some fairly detailed information about those. And I might be wrong. So let me know if anybody feels that I'm giving wrong information here, but um, cal calendar information and the calendar list, those seem to be the two. Um, you can reschedule an event, delete an event, um, and those are referenced by the event name, uh, event name, I believe, which I wasn't sure how to get uh, exactly either. Um, search events, update guest lists, so on and so forth. So you do have some higher end functions, but I didn't get a chance to play with those at all. So for the create event, um, it's a really straightforward one. Um, of course, you're going to go ahead and connect your Google Calendar account. And I had already done that. Otherwise, it would throw up a dialog asking you to authenticate. Um, since I'm authenticated, it's connected and it's got permissions to do what it needs to do. The calendar name. So I'm referencing, this is, I've got my different calendars and these are the calendars that are in, in here, right? So I could get a list and I can determine which one to go into, but I've got two Claris connects and I'm going to put it into the, uh, the first Claris connect. The quick start text. Um, this is, and it's got an example here, meeting at home, July 3rd, 10. So it'll parse this out, uh, really efficiently. So I don't have to go through a whole lot of formatting. Um, you know, I, I can be fairly loose about this and it'll interpret it and build the, uh, build the event properly, um, which is kind of nice. Uh, the more advanced one requires, you know, more specific date and time formatting. Um, and so you have to be a little bit more careful there, but this one, this one's really loose. So uh, from there, I take the value from my webhook, which is uh, the create event. And in the create event, I was, I was passing meeting at home, the date, and then 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And those were set from the event that it's passing. So um, basically from the JSON object that's passed in for my webhook, I'm going to take that create event uh, as the event that I'm going to set and, um, and set that. And then notifications, um, turning that on, and then hit save. And so at this point, it would just go ahead and create the event. I do want to... Um, to make to update my FileMaker solution as well. So after this, I have uh, an action where I'm taking the response from the 
uh, the calendar and pushing that information into FileMaker on the record that that's for, um, just to be extra sure that it got, it got processed and everything went smoothly. Um, so in this one, I'm gonna go ahead and edit a record. And because in the initial, um, in that initial webhook, I was passing in the record ID, I can say edit record and select, I've already connected my FileMaker server to the solution that I'm connecting to. Um, going to go to the layout name, which is meeting details for this particular one. And the record ID that I'm looking to use is one of the variables that I was passing in there. So I'm going to pass that record in and then update. Uh, I've got a field in there called response. And I'm going to put in the response from the uh, Google calendar. Um, and this is one where I, I had been uh, putting these in each listed. Uh, so I have this complete uh, stack basically of, of its entire response. Um, and this maybe was a little unnecessary, but I thought it was kind of fun to, to do the start and the end times, capture it all out in the sequence and then um, the event type. And, um, and then to make it easy on my, in FileMaker, since I'm just putting them into a response field, coming in here and putting some pipes in so that I could easily, uh, easily format it with uh, return, you know, do substitute in the text field and update them. Uh, so I could easily read it since it was all gonna be mushed together. But I really just kind of wanted to have a, a dump of the JSON that it's responding with so that I could evaluate that. And you know, since I'm unfamiliar with what, what some of that information means and you know how useful it is, I kind of want to be able to play with that. So that was the point of sending that back. And so it's gonna load that into the response field. I'll hit save. And so, um, so there's our, our process. Um, so we go ahead and turn it on now and, um, and we'll try, uh, try sending it. So the script that I just wrote, we will um, fire it off. We'll, let's change some values on here. We'll change this to 4 p.m. to um, 6 p.m. And uh, these buttons aren't connected to the one that I just created, but let's go ahead and fire it off and see what we get. So this was the response that I, after sending that webhook, and then, um, yep. and then here's our calendar event here. Let's take a look and see what we get in, in our calendar itself. And yep, there's our calendar from, was it four to six? Is that right? Or did I change it? Yep, four to six, perfect. So our calendar made it there, everything looks good. And here's the response back with the, with all the pipes and then I could go through and replace those pipes so I can easily read it uh, uh, or read it a little bit better and then parse it out further. Um, so that was it. It, was, it wasn't too hard learning about the webhooks. Using the webhooks was a much better process. Uh, I, it seemed counterintuitive for me when first using it because I was expecting, you know, FileMaker is gonna be talking to FileMaker. So that was the original path I went down to, but, um, yeah, other than that, I worked pretty good. Some of the other, the other ones about the list, um, here is what the Get Google Calendar list uh, was responding with. Um, and so recycle that and you can see it gives us some information and then it gives us a big JSON object of stuff that's, uh, I don't know how useful it is. Here's the, uh, the calendar info one, which was similar, not quite as much information, let's see here. Uh, yeah, it tells us the Claris Connect, the the uh, the time, the you know, the, this is the um, time zone that it's in, and then this is uh, Hangouts meeting. So these are different settings that are allowed on that calendar, which um, which I think if you were uh, again, if you wanted to check the calendar, like after you got the list of calendars that you're going to send it into, you could check that calendar and make sure that it some criteria meets what you need before you would then send this event to that calendar. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and some of the other ones that were in there, uh, you know, for the, the calendar, um, I, I tried to, but I couldn't figure out exactly how to get it to work where I would um, basically uh, reschedule an event. Um, and I think it has to do with the event name but when I was passing the event name, I couldn't figure out how to get it set. I, I was trying the more advanced feature. Um, I played with it for a couple hours this morning and just quite 
couldn't quite get it to work. Um, I think it would take a little bit more time to ensure that I was passing the data in correctly, get the event created correctly, um, because the ad it advanced version has um, uh, requires that you specify a little bit more detail, and um, and so your structure has to be a little bit more precise. Um, the calendar name is pretty, you know, the s same process. The send notification is the same, you know, true or false process. But um, so uh, when you're when you're um... Creating. Starts and end times are, are yeah. specific and they, they have to be formatted like this. So, 